Stroke is a focal neurological deficit, okay. which is of no other origin but cardiovascular in origin. Depression is the leading cause of disability. Depression on its own it's, is a persistent feeling of sadness, okay. a persistent feeling of hopelessness. Welcome viewers to this week's episode of Health Watch on Anglican Cable Network Nigeria. I am Angela Weze. Stroke can be a frightening medical emergency and has a huge impact on both the patient and their families. According to the World Health Organization, stroke and other cardiovascular diseases are the second leading cause of death and the third leading cause of disability. The World Health Organization also reported in 2012 that over 6.7 million persons died of stroke globally. Over the last four decades, the stroke incidence in low- and middle-income countries has more than doubled. In fact, 70% of strokes and 87% of both stroke-related deaths and disability occur in low- and middle-income countries. However, stroke incidence has declined by 42% in high-income countries. Strangely, on average, stroke occurs 15 years earlier in persons living in low- and middle-income countries when compared to those in high-income countries. Now, the question that comes to mind is what exactly is happening in low- and middle-income countries? Why is there a decline in incidence in high-income countries and a rise in low- and middle-income countries? What is stroke? Can it be prevented? If gotten, how can it be managed or treated? My guest on the program today is Dr. Chibike Chimdi. He is the Senior Registrar, Family Medicine Department at the Metama District Hospital, Abuja. You're welcome to the program, Dr. Chimdi. Thank you. It's good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> good to have you here. All right, let's start. Okay, let's start with what is stroke, because I know people have their own different definition. In fact, I've never heard somebody say, I, I, I'm suffering from stroke. It's always like stroke has been sent to me, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but what is stroke in itself mm -hmm. so that we're clear on our definition? Stroke is a focal neurological deficit, okay. which is of no other origin but cardiovascular in origin. Okay. Um, we know that the brain operates and uh, controls and coordinates every part of our body and every part of our body is represented in the brain mm -hmm. so whenever there is a an obstruction mm -hmm. or whenever there is um, any of the parts that that represent a particular part of our body had been um, the the blood supply had been cut off mm -hmm. it's actually present as what we see as stroke okay which this means that the path that supply that part has been shut off of oxygen which is the main thing that the brain if lives, on. lives on so what you're saying now is as our brain is all the parts of the body the you know they are represented in the brain yes. so when there's a problem there you know then it affects that part of the body then the yes. body then has the problem it has so what would have caused it what would cause it to, what why would it happen yeah, if we if we understand the different types of stroke, okay. that could also help us understand the okay. causes oh. of stroke. Okay. Um, we have the hemorrhagic stroke, mm -hmm. we have the ischemic stroke, and uh, these are the two broad classes. There is a third group that we call transient ischemic attack, okay. which is still like a junior brother or a mini ischemic stroke. Ischemic in the sense that there is a blockage in the supply of blood to the particular part of the brain that represents that and um, the body that's where we have the weakness okay. uh, when this occurs when there is a blood clot from any origin whether it's from the heart or it's from um, it, an artery that is not working fine which whenever that blocks the um, ves the vessels that supply the brain it's called an ischemic stroke this is one part then we also have what we call the hemorrhagic stroke. Hemorrhagic stroke comes from when there is a burst or bleeding into the brain. So the vein just blows, blows up and all that. So when it blows up, the blood that are meant to pass through the vessels are now 
then poured on the brain so that particular place that the normal oxygen so oxygen and blood supply is cut off at this particular time the, that part of the brain that is marked if it's either the hand or the leg that is affected will experience a weakness or any other part of the body okay what, what is coming to my mind is now why would there be a clot in in that's for the ischemic ischemic, ischemic. then i'll talk about the hemorrhage because yes. why would it burst like that something would have caused it the veins don't just blow yes. so why would there be a clot in the in the blood vessel in the brain okay the the if we understand what causes a clot mm -hmm. that will also tell us what are these risk factors mm -hmm. that we see before we experience a stroke if there is a if the heart if there is a heart problem and the heart is not functioning well the blood if it's if it's left to stay in a particular place for a while it starts clothing so that can be dislodged from the heart and when it's supplied to the brain that clot is when it lodges in the brain it forms a clot which causes the ischemia the word okay. ischemia is short of blood, blood supply. supply okay and so when it causes that Short, um, blockage in the blood supply and oxygen is 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 deprived, deprived from that from part that, of yeah. the brain then that is how the clot can also be formed that uh, other ways that the blood can also be formed if we have problems that um causes the intima the inner part of the blood vessels to um, start having problem eroding it can start causing cloth when we also have the unhealthy lifestyle that we live and have a lot of cholesterol in the system, it also encourages clothing. And okay. when these things happen, it can dislodge and cause that. There's also what we call deep vein, vein thrombosis. When we have the veins in the leg getting enlarged, they get dilated. And because they are now enlarged and dilated, they are not pumping back blood back to the heart. And okay. the blood stay there for a while. When they stay there, they cloth. And when they eventually get pumped back, then it gets dislodged um, into the brain. Okay, I just want to, you know, when you talk of blood clots, it's like yeah. when you have an injury, isn't it? Yeah. And that thing that, you know, forms on the top of the skin, yeah. that's something similar to what we're talking about. Yeah. So imagine that within the small space in the vein, that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's just to help our viewers to understand that what it yeah. caught. Okay, yeah. then the hemorrhagic. Okay. Yes. Hemorrhagic. You know, as he, the, blood the, bl the blood is carried through the blood vessels. Mm -hmm. And uh, the blood vessels is like when we have a pipe mm -hmm. conveying water. It's it, it, whatever thing you get at the output, at the end of the pipe, it's such that if the pressure is high, the output will be high. Then if you have the blood vessel that is weak, maybe coming from maybe an infection or problems with the vessels at, uh, at the arteries or the vein, whenever, whenever the intima, the, the things that make up the blood vessels are weak, mm. it can predispose to a hemorrhage, um, hemorrhage okay. occurring. There's also what we call aneurysm. Aneurysms are, they could come from either congenital cause where the, the blood vessels are not well constituted. With little pressure, they can burst. The other more common thing that we we'll see is that when there is high blood pressure, okay. just like the word high, the blood of pressure course, the is pressure high blood, yes. and all that. So with an increased pressure, on the blood vessels then it can also cause it to burst just like the ordinary um pipe pipes that you when have, you also yes. have a very high pressure on it and the, if the vessel if the pipe is not very strong it can burst so this is common with people with high blood pressure yes that most is most of the yes hemorrhagic stroke mm -hmm. is more seen in people with high blood pressure or, or whatever anything that can also increase the blood pressure you okay. know somebody may not be hypertensive before time but if you do something that um, is forceful in a very short time when you shout when you have a bout of a uh, um, altercation with your neighbor or any other person or when you strain mm -hmm. or when you want to um, strain to either pass stool or to even vomit you can okay. actually increase the pressure the pressure to the brain to the brain okay these pressures these pressures build on in the vessels 
okay. which will now lead to the hemorrhage. You know, I, I want to link it a little bit with the experiences people have uh, that it was sent. Maybe I had a little altercation with someone. Mm -hmm. You have increased your pressure, the blood pressure within that time by the stressors that you have elevated at that time. And if it's somebody who had a background hypertension, mm -hmm. It can actually well, I think I really want you to say that again yes. <laughs> because it's very common how yes. people you know say that it has to be sent to them and when you get to the hospital the doctor says well this is what your problem is so when you are tense mm. over maybe what you've had with somebody yes. and you already have maybe you didn't even know that you had a history of high blood, high blood pressure. pressure that can actually increase you know, your um, um, intraterial pressures which will invariably increase your intracranial pressures and you can have a bust in the blood wow, vessels. Wow. So that is what explains Explain. explains that ah, I just finished um, having a bout of this and you told me that you are going to die and then suddenly yeah, that, tension, of course. Yeah, that tension builds up and all that you, you see that you are now coming down with. Okay so um, nobody sending it nobody to you. Sends it. <laughs> you are There's even the other parts the explanation for the ischemic stroke usually it's also seen in after a night rest that is how the doctor differentiates a hemorrhagic stroke from an ischemic. an ischemic stroke a hemorrhagic stroke usually after an exertion after a very strenuous activity or mm -hmm. after something that could have made could your pressure, pressure yeah. on you so when that happens we can explain that then there's this other part the ischemic stroke because it's a clot that will gradually come and block the blood vessels. Mm -hmm. Usually we experience that after a sleep. So it occurs most times in when people morning. are sleeping. sleeping okay. And then in their village, maybe when they're in their villages and all that, they, are, they just came out, maybe they, they just um, come out of their rooms to come and ease themselves and suddenly the clots that are built over time they will not say, ah, they've sent it over the night. Okay. The spirit world have sent, sent it. And it. All that. But every time, you, it, there's never been a case, I guess, in your, in your mm. whole um, um, career as a doctor, mm. where you've seen somebody who has come in with a stroke and didn't have any form of um, high blood pressure or any, mm. or you test and he didn't have any symptoms. Of course, there has never been a case like that, um, where the person is perfectly yeah. all right and now has a stroke. Uh, from just these two explanations I yes, just gave can, now, mm -hmm. you can actually see that we can explain every stroke mm -hmm. and that could actually, by the time you also do your diagnostic um, regimen, mm -hmm. you now s you confirm this, whether it was an ischemic stroke or it oh, was yeah. a hemorrhagic stroke okay. because it can either be from increased blood pressure mm -hmm. or from a clot that was okay. lodged at a Over particular a point. Of time. Yeah. We'll talk about you know how the you know the blood pressure. We'll talk about the okay. uh, uh, um, cure and treatment. But yes. let me let's look at the transient ischemic attack. attack. That one you talked about. Yes. Can you talk about that? David? Okay. I I try to call it um, a mini stroke. Okay. Before yes. now, there used to be a definition that it's um, when you have a focal neurological deficit and uh, that recovers over 24 hours. What do you mean by... Okay, neurological deficit, I've been mean, trying to avoid that word. Okay, when, neurological. When you have weakness okay. in any part of your body, mm -hmm. whether, whether the arm, the leg, or sometimes deviation of the face, or even speech and all those things. Because I, my introduction, I said that every part of our body is represented in the in brain. The brain. So, if the brain cannot send a message and cannot control any part of these bodies, then it is called there's a neurological deficit okay. in that particular place. So any neurological deficit that occurs and recovers completely mm -hmm. within 24 hours is called transit ischemic attack. So it's not a problem that you take you to the hospital, to the doctor, or is it something you can go to the sure, hospital? Sure, it's to something. See? Okay. Is this something you, you should go to if you notice it? Why I'm asking this, mm -hmm. I know sometimes when I wake up in the morning, you yeah. know, after you've laid on one part of your hand for a long time, mm -hmm. it feels heavy and, you know, you don't feel it until after a period of time, then you start feeling, I don't know if it's because of the direction I laid or, or something. Is that the same thing or it's a different... No, it's exactly the same thing. Different people have tried to describe the word tragic ischemic. Some have called it um, stroke in evolution. So it's still that same part of formation of ischemic stroke but this time around maybe there was a small cloth mm -hmm. and because of that small cloth 
that got dislodged, uh, maybe in the process of maybe one or two things, it got dislodged. Mm -hmm. the, the period that it was still there, the brain will not have oxygen, will not have blood supply, okay. and because of that, it will cause the deficits, either in the arm, weakness in the arm, weakness in the leg, or deviation of the face, or even the speech. Okay. But one thing about transit ischemic attack is that you recover after 24 hours. Oh, okay. If the patient does not recover after 24 hours, then we will now want to look further to now classify it either as an ischemic stroke or a hemorrhagic stroke. Okay, okay. So the transient ischemic is when you start noticing such, it's important to start watching, mm. you know, you actually meant to, to get you actually get to, meant the to get to the doctor doctor immediately before we yeah. talk about okay that's um mm. so what age bracket suffer the stroke is it ev everybody well in my life i've seen more of older pe persons but i hear these days you have people younger com coming down with it what age bracket okay when we look at the risk factors that can actually help us know that age is a major risk factor in stroke and uh, that is with advancing age those that are more than 40 and above and what is interesting thing about this age group these are the people that you have uh, many comorbidities comorbidities like diabetes these okay. are the age group you have hypertension these are the age group that you can have what we call atherosclerosis okay. that is the thickening of okay. the blood vessels, blood vessels yeah. and all that these are also people who had also maybe missed it from their lifestyle these are people who may have smoked these are people who may have also consumed um, lots of alcohol a lot yeah. of alcohols yeah. and all that those are the major parts of the people that you will see coming down with um, stroke however if you if you understand the part of physiology which you have tried to mm -hmm. describe um, whereby that it can also come from a weakening of the blood vessels which is what we call aneurysm so we can actually see it in children on because of that there is also another class of people that have a high risk of um, having stroke where you can see it at any age group within that group the sickle cell disease patient okay because they have their the, because of the sickling of the blood blood vessels blood cells cells yes because of sickling of the blood cells they tend to cloth and when they clot they oh. will tend to form a lot of those thrombos that when they they can actually get to the brain and then cause a stroke in a two-year-old child wow because of that cloth so it's mainly amongst the older people older people and if you've exposed yourself to lifestyle that is not yes. like you mentioned you mm. know the smoking and alcohol, lots of alcohol and your and hypertensive, hypertensive and all that but this other group that way maybe you have the connective tissue disorder mm -hmm. and with that the blood vessels were not well formed you have um, the sickle cell disease patient yes. which could also start manifesting at a very young, young age. age they can also have ischemic stroke because they form a lot of blood clots that will go and lodge into the blood vessels into the in the brain, brain and cause a stroke yeah you mentioned diabetes because I, I, I know my grandma, you know, she had a stroke, yes. but she was diabetic. Mm. I, I don't remember hypertension, mm. but what's the relationship? Okay. Because diabetes is more of, you know, a high Bl um, well, insulin dependence and all, yeah, blood high glucose. Blood glucose yes. and all that. So what's the relationship between diabetes and stroke? It, yes, you know, diabetes is a multi-organ disease. And because it's a multi-organ disease, it has a lot of complications in every part of our system. Diabetes will affect the kidneys. Diabetes will also um, cause impairment in the lipid profiles. Okay. So in, with that, you can have a lot of the cholesterol forming um, moieties in the system. And this, we have linked, can increase the clotting ability of the blood uh, of the blood diabetes can also affect the kidneys when they, it affects the kidneys it causes a what we call a nephropathy that is uh, which can trigger a hypertension okay. as well and then with this erased and uh, high blood pressure will or can give you the hemorrhagic stroke that you have diabetes on itself 
um, also comes in with other comorbidities. Those that you see that have diabetes could either be obese, they are on the yes, large, big size and all that. And those that are also on the big side are also predisposed to having sedentary lifestyle. Yeah. They can sit in one place at a, a very long time. And when they sit down in a very in a, a place for a very long time, they have the ability to, to have blood clots in their system. Okay. Because if you don't move, if you don't, if you are not active, active, highly active, then the blood will stay at one place and clot. Okay, just yeah. as you mentioned in the and beginning, anything yeah. that will keep the blood. blood. So the, the, that's the importance of the exercise. I yeah. think we'll talk about that when yeah. we're talking about prevention. Yes, the so the more you move, you have yeah. um, less, of, less of, the risk. of the risk factors. Okay, yeah. now I, I wanted to talk, just before we go on the break, I wanted to talk on um, uh, the symptoms. Okay. What you notice when you're because some most of the time it's always when it's at the very bad stage i don't know if you keep noticing the symptoms we've talked about the transient ischemic um, attacks. attacks you know that's the one you should notice when you wake mm. up and you find out that you didn't feel a part of your body or you go numb yeah. that's the normal word isn't it? you go yeah. numb yeah. and then after um, um 24 hours you, you recover you find everything is don't just think you have been um, okay. okay or yeah. everything is fine just go and see a doctor and be sure Apart from that, what are the symptoms? What symptoms should you be looking out for? You know, especially for the patient and also for other people looking at, you know, them, family members looking at them. Okay. The truth about stroke is that it comes with a lot of symptoms that could give you a warning sign. Because the brain, the brain is enclosed in the skull. For anything that, that is almost causing a risk, to the brain, it tries to develop a pressure that will increase intracranial, what we call intracranial pressure. So with that, the first seeming symptom that we'll get is the patient coming down with headache, a throbbing headache. headache. Okay, let me just, that because mm. you know, mm -hmm. even people with hypertension, people mm. who, they always complain about, headache. you know, this headache, it keeps coming and yes. coming, and when you check their blood pressure is really very high. Uh, very high. So even it's actually a warning sign that there is an impending stroke coming. Okay, so constant headache, if you yes, notice that you're having constant headache. headache because headache there is now either deficient, deficiency, the supply of a particular part of the brain, or that there is an increased pressure within. So that's, it's giving that headache. Well, you can have want... weakness in the limb, upper limb, or weakness in the lower limb, some can get so bad that it's not just weakness, there is complete paralysis of any of the sides. It can happen either on the, just the upper part or the lower part. It can also present with destruction in the speech. It can also, if we also see some, they can have deviation of their face, depending on the Inside part of, it's yes, it's deviated. That, that means there is a weakness weakening. on okay. that part. So the part that still have the ability to contract will be drawing the face to the other parts and all that. So these are symptoms that you could see, the weakness. Some could feel tiredness, but they are not like specific to stroke. But the, more, the things that are more specific when you have um, the weakness, upper okay. limb, lower limb. So when, you, sorry, when yeah. you talk about the weakness, I'm trying to understand weakness. Mm. Is it when you try to lift your hand and you, you think it's moving, but you, it's not responding, or how do you, I know you never had a stroke before, but mm. I, I mean from the patient, the is feeling. it they just feel this heaviness in lifting the hand, or mm -hmm. how does it, this weakness? Uh, in, in, you happen? know, I, 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 if, you, if you understand the concept, I say the brain mm -hmm. controls every part of the body. If the brain sends a, a, a signal to any part of the body, maybe you, you tell the patient, oh, lift your hand, and the patient will, will want naturally will want to obey what you have said from the brain, but because now there is a cough, there is there is now a break in the linkage mm -hmm. of the the command system from the brain to that part. So the person cannot carry out that function. That okay. some you may not even be able to move the hand. You may not be able to move the leg. Some depending on the extent okay. of the damage and the, or the extent of the compromise that you see is just like a weakness they can't lift it full the the the, the, the maximum power you expect from that limb will not be there okay. so those are the 
things that you could see some when it affects the speech area cannot speak that is that is some of the things that you can also see and then in severe cases when it affects the the other part of the brain especially in hemorrhagic stroke mm -hmm. the patient could come in unconscious and will remain unconscious until you are able to evacuate those those blood, blood from, in the, the, from the, the, brain. the brain yes wow and okay that. so that's headaches we're looking at headaches Headache. very important once yes. you notice know especially mm. if you if you've been predisposed with the lifestyle we've talked about mm. and then you know you're having constant headaches say or over we will say over 40 yes from age, 40 over from 40 yes, and from you 40 notice years. consistent even if you're younger but yeah. let's keep it at 40 you consistent mm. headache you need to see then weakness in the arm yeah and the limb Really. Then the speech, it talks about the speech. Yes, it can affect the speech. The speech. So the person you know, can make coherent speeches speech. At all. And then the deviation. Deviation on the face. On the face, okay. It could also, there could be bilateral stroke. It can occur on both sides. But both sides of the face? Yes. It can occur both sides. And okay. On the, but most times, what we will see most times, maybe one side. If it affects the, the funny thing is that the brain it's it is is represented in the opposite direction. When you see a weakness on the left or the right side, there's a problem in the left part of the part brain. Of the brain. Okay. When you see a weakness or a problem on the left side, the representation, the problem it's somewhat it's on the problem. So that's right that's easier for, for doctors when they try to <laughs> make the identification. Yes. But we're going to go on a quick break. When we return, then okay. we'll continue more on the... the we, we just talked about the symptoms. Maybe mm. just wrap up the symptom and then look at management and prevention. Okay. We'll be right back, viewers. At the King's Court is a program where we worship and praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords through various musical renditions. So join me, Eukaria Ozovehe, at the King's Court every Tuesday by 6 p.m. on this station and it promises to be exciting and rewarding. Welcome back viewers. Before we went on the break, we were discussing stroke and its management and my guest has been Dr. Chibike Chimdi. He's the Senior Registrar, Family Medicine Department at the Metama District Hospital. Okay, before we went on the break, we were wrapping up on the symptoms. Yeah. So we've talked about um, the, the, the headaches, we talked about the headaches, we talked about the weakness in the arms, facial you know, defi them deviations, you know, and then the speech. Yes. Then, when you notice this, what's the first thing to do, obviously, to get to, to take the patient to the doctor or what should the person be doing? Is there any first aid the person can do quickly or you just have to take him to the doctor? Mm. Stroke is a medical emergency. Yeah. Because it's a medical emergency, um, in a system that works, that's a time to die, your ambulance or your hospital or your 911, mm. because you need immediate help. The management of stroke um, within the first few hours of a stroke determines the outcome. Mm. Um, there have been studies that have shown that if you're able to detect stroke within the first four hours, especially an ischemic stroke, and then you're able to reverse that process, you can actually have a perfect um, outcome. But the because of our environment, and you know, the first point of call will not, most people will not think about an emergency care. And whenever, even when they decide to think about an emergency care, it may not be available because mm -hmm. of the inefficiencies in our system and all that. But however, if you're able to detect any of the symptoms or any of this, the symptoms that you have elicited earlier and you're able to get an emergency attention within the first four hours, especially in ischemic stroke, the, the reversal is perfect and complete. That is the, that's the first thing. When the emergency services 
arrive whether as an emergency care or you present in the hospital the doctor is expected to because it's emergency you would want to make sure that there's life you want to make sure that the patient is is breathing you want to make sure that the airways are patent and uh, you want to make sure that the circulation is intact these are the things that you expect because it's a life patient that you will actually get to manage mm -hmm. uh, you know one of the symptoms we talked about is that the patient can come in unconscious and in, in, when they come in unconscious they may have aspirated they may have had things that uh, will be stuffing off their respiratory tract so you have to take care of that to make sure that the airway is perfect, the breathing is okay, then you make sure that the patient is stable, you commence um, the circulation for that. In this, this is now when the doctor needs to take out time to manage, to, be, to take out time to take a good history. Mm -hmm. Because the management of an ischemic stroke, it's the direct opposite of a hemorrhagic stroke. Okay. Yes. Okay. So a high index of suspicion of the physician is very, very necessary because, you know, uh, we have we try to explain ischemic stroke. There's a clot, so you want to dislodge the clot. You want to get things that will dissolve that clot. Okay. okay. And uh, if you, if the physician makes the mistake or erroneously administers these things that should lightening the blood in somebody who is bleeding. Okay, that's a hemorrhagic, a hemorrhagic one. That's you now see that you are worsening the hemorrhagic stroke, um, stroke okay. because you are encouraging the bleeding to continue. So, okay, so in that mm. case, this blood thinners, these medicines you it, take for blood thinners, you have to be careful. You know, can they have that effect? Because I know blood thinners, when they, I think they make the blood lighter and when you take them, to allow more flow uh, it will be fine to really understand what you mean by blood thinners but okay. somehow there are what we call antiplatelets okay yes okay. Mm -hmm. these are the things that we we give things that will make sure that the blood does not clot okay uh, we have things like uh, aspirin okay that's supreme. these are things that will make sure that the clothing process are dissolved okay. so if you go and dissolve further a, a patient who is having bleeding and you was you can actually worsen yes, the yes. hemorrhagic stroke. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to make out here is that the doctor takes a good history mm -hmm. and what are the histories that he's going to take for you to know that is a, a hemorrhagic stroke. You know, when we talked about um, the first one, there must have been maybe a history of strain, mm -hmm. a history of stress, a history of straining, a history of maybe an altercation, a history of something that could have raised the intracranial pressure or anything that would have increased the intra, intra, intra arterial pressure. Mm -hmm. Either from a, a, a known hypertensive over a long time and all that. So you know that this must have come from um, a, a, this could have caused a hemorrhagic yes, stroke uh -huh. because it would have come with a history of stress, stress and strain. Why, on the other hand, what will tell you that most likely this person may have had an ischemic stroke? If we are just tell you, come out with a history that I was just sleeping, I just woke up, mm -hmm. and I've just gone to eat myself, and the person yeah, falls oh, okay. because the body cannot carry him again from his sleep. Oh, so, okay. usually, the process of the clot taking the um, blood vessels would have come from a, a time of rest, a time of when the person was resting, then you can actually see okay. that and um, all that. Okay, so that's it. So the first thing is to get to take the person quickly to the to the hospital. Yes. If the place is where there's an emergency, you call yeah. the emergency service to yes. pick the person mm -hmm. and get them to the hospital. So whoever is taking the, uh, the, the, the patient should mm -hmm. have a little knowledge about you know about the, you know the patient you're presenting yes because you know we also talked about the risk factors though these mm -hmm. are also things that can also if it's a known hypertensive you know that yeah you would would take towards a more of a um a, a stroke a, a hemorrhagic stroke mm -hmm. if this person had been um very obese yes, yeah. with um, maybe a known high diabetic which lives a very sedentary lifestyle mm -hmm. or somebody who had had a previous heart problem
that you know that that could predispose to increased clot formation okay. so you know that this more, most likely will come from an ischemic stroke and usually there's no history of stress there's no history of um strain that's from the ischemic from the ischemic, ischemic. Okay, both of them are, are just as you said the direct mm. opposite yes. of, of each other mm. so the watchword now is once you notice the symptoms yes. but I, I like the part of the headache that's why I keep you know pressing on it mm. and it's good to also keep you know going to your doctor to be sure yes. that you know you mm. are okay do they do any is it possible to do a scan at what point do you do a scan to notice some of these things or okay. it's just when you have the headaches you just go and say please do a scan for me I want to know if there's Clots in my brain, or yeah. Okay, I was just trying to reel out okay, the okay. the management path and okay. the best the the principle of management, as I said, mm -hmm. is the emergency care. Okay. Then a good history. Mm -hmm. Then you examine the patient to know the extent of deficit that is there. And then after your um, your clinical examination, you do some investigations. Investigations will include looking out for the risk factors. Okay. Risk factors here like you well, we want to know if this person is diabetic if mm -hmm. it's um if there's any problems with the kidneys if there's any problem if this is a no the genotype of this patient the genotype will be disposed to ischemic stroke and okay. all that then the gold standard in differentiating what you are what you have in your hand is a CT scan, compuf, um, contrived tomography, okay. or an MRI. These are the two imaging of the brain okay. that will tell you, ah, there is a hemorrhagic stroke or there is an ischemic stroke. Okay. So when you have that, then that is clearly tells you the line of management on what to do. If it's hemorrhagic, you determine the extent of the hemorrhage. If okay. the extent of the bleeding in the brain, and then depending on the uh, um, the the what part that you have, that you call in the services of the neurosurgeon. Okay. As I said earlier on, it's a multidisciplinary management. Okay. You require a lot of you require the dietitian, you require the physiotherapist, you require the neurosurgeon, you require the physician, mm. and all manners of health care. You even require the speech therapist mm. at the time that you, because you need to make sure that these people get back to their original level of function. So if, if it's hemorrhagic, the, he, the neurosurgeon could get in to drain the blood mm -hmm. that is already That's there. Already Sometimes if it's also ischemic, they can also open up to remove the clot and all that. So these are the lines of management that you have. There's also a medical management. It no, it's not in all cases that you require the service. You must get a neurosurgeon to open. If the ischemia had occurred and it has resolved over a time, it's is and is dislodged. It's cold. The patient can just get back over time with your physiotherapy. The functions can get back and patient is okay just from medical management control whatever is the risk factors if it's um, hypertension take care of it mm -hmm. if it's diabetes control diabetes if 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 you also have other things like sickle cell we mentioned mm -hmm. you make sure that the patient does not have repeated um, sickling yeah, and that make that sure that sense. the person is not predisposed to that if it's the vein thrombosis, you look at that and take care of it to make sure that the patient does not show an embolus mm -hmm. and the other very very important part of the management is lifestyle modification okay lifestyle modification mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay the lifestyle modification incorporates your diet and exercise in the diet you diet exercise and social habits if alcohol we recommend alcohol um, reduction mm -hmm. smoking cessation any form of smoking, smoking yeah. cessation alcohol reduction and uh, you also make sure that the person eats healthy and taking um, vegetables, vegetables and fruits, fruits yeah. and all that. It has two functions here because it will reduce the cholesterol level, mm -hmm. which will predispose to the clot. It can also give what we call free, um, and it for serves as an antioxidant, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which yes, in yeah. the match, the um, match, the, the in the management, sometimes you give vitamin C and vitamin E okay. as part of management, but just your natural fruits and. Uh, vegetables mm -hmm. could give you such that will take care of um, as it will serve as an antioxidant that will take care of all that and then help in the 
rejuvenation of the brain the cells. Brain cells. Uh, so the one thing the patient must have, the, 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 the patient, you mm -hmm. know, should have a lot of patience to allow the doctors, because sometimes you see some people, they start and you keep them, you see them limping for a very long period of time, you know, and they keep sounding like, oh, the doctor doesn't know what he's doing or all of that. But it's very important for the patient to be patient yes. with the doctor and allow, you know, the process to mm. take its place, like all you mentioned, mm. you know, in the management mm. of the stroke. Isn't it? Yeah, what's the thing is this if you understand how these things are caused, mm -hmm. you can actually know that it's not within the powers of the doctors to say you came in with a stroke today, tomorrow, tomorrow you are fine. Yeah. It's, it's a deficit. The brain had there has been a cut in the coordination of that part of the body, so it's like a dead place for a while. And because it's dead, you now need time for that part of the brain. Because the brain cannot survive without oxygen and yes. um, blood, mm -hmm. which supply the, supply oxygen, the oxygen over the a, brain, a time. Yes. And if that is cut over a time, there's a brain cells, mm -hmm. brain cells dead, that, yeah. and all that. So now you need to rejuve rejuvenate that part, and uh, it's until that happens that's when it can start coordinating oh. that part. And then these are the things that will help in supporting care to help in rehabilitation. That's why we encourage them to go to physiotherapy. Physiotherapy starts with small functions and all that so that you can get back to the point where you can actually, some can have the function restored 100%, some over time. Mm -hmm. Then you also get the services of a, physio um, a speech therapist okay. for those that have a um, um, speech defect and all that. And over time, they can actually okay. get well and when they go through the process of the management then we we'll have a perfect so recovery. stroke is not a, a a condition that cannot be managed at all if you're patient and you take the time with your doctor follow the instructions you're giving you know and do all that you have just said it's possible for the person to regain his life back and start the normal life okay let's talk about I think we've doubled into it a bit, prevention. Okay. okay. You know, I, th I think everything about prevention should start early because once you start getting older, mm. you know, you should know that the, the time might be too late. But how mm. do you prevent um, stroke from happening? Okay. Uh, I want to look at that if we understand the risk factors mm -hmm. that will help us yes. prevent it. And I want to maybe broadly classify it into modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. Okay, modifiable and, and non-modifiable non -modifiable risk factors. Risk factors. Um, there are things, the non-modifiable risk factors, there are things you cannot change. When we look at the risk factors, that we are blacks, which has a higher risk. We cannot okay, change, yes. change that. The black race, um, African black, um, that we, we grow and age. We can't do anything That's about it. You can't say, I wouldn't want to grow and um, all that. So this is black age, then the family history yes. of hypertension mm -hmm. that I'm born in a particular place. You cannot really change that. Um, you also look at beyond the, 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 the family history, there's also genetic predisposition mm -hmm. that when you also have that you cannot really change it then you know we talked about sickle cell disease it's not in the control of the child, child. who had now been a sickler to say i can change this where we could have changed it maybe the parents not yeah if they actually they follow the counseling and will not get married and will not produce a sickle cell child. but as at the time a sickle cell child that we, we cannot do anything about that mm. at that point so these are things that are more uh, non-modifiable well, we modify uh, but can somehow we can look at that then there are modifiable risk factors so these are the ones that we want to place emphasis on so that people can start on time to prevent and what are these ones smoking you we can actually tell people not to smoke mm -hmm. when they don't smoke you will not predispose yourself to developing hypertension you know predispose yourself to developing atherosclerosis and with that you will not come down with stroke there are other things like alcohol mm -hmm. uh, consumption it can be modified if we don't take alcohol you will not predispose yourself to the point that you can either 
develop hypertension that will invariably lead to stroke. We also have some other modifiable risk factors like um, control of diabetics. Okay. If you, beyond the non-modifiable part that you have a, a genetic, predis genetic, predisposition. genetic predisposition for diabetes, if you actually live right, live healthy, have a good lifestyle, there is no law that says you must actually come down with diabetics. So if we can actually, from lifestyle, control that part, then you can actually do that. Even hypertension, if we do the right thing, eat right, reduce our salt intake. Salt intake? Yes, salt. salt intake. We take a lot of salt in. Yes, yeah. reduce salt our intake. salt intake reduce the this still um, high, uh, the things that also produce hypertension like smoking mm -hmm. alcohol and then taking that um, um, good vegetables mm -hmm. and reducing um, cholesterol containing foods mm -hmm. like then the oil oil those that, are that has high in cholesterol. the high mm -hmm. in cholesterol so when we do that we we'll control hypertension so you could see that there are modifiable things then there are also other things in activity level mm -hmm. if you are sedentary you're always sitting at a particular place over a long time is a modifiable risk factor because if you continue to sit you predispose yourself to um, deep yeah, ventrovosis yes. that mm -hmm. will cause the stroke but if you are active then you will reduce that okay. if you are also obesity by being higher by, by being uh, active as mm -hmm. well you will also reduce that particular risk mm -hmm. so these modifiable risk factors that we have we when we look at them we can now classify them and say okay are there things that we can do that will help us it takes us back to the initial thing we talked about lifestyle modification yeah. so when 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 we talk about eating right making sure that your um that you always eat right, right. good Take vegetables, vegetables and stay away from excessive, excessive like, um, cholesterol containing cholesterol food sugar and as well, glucose containing yes. food yeah. and carbohydrates and all that so these are things that will help then we also have increased activity the studies have shown that if you're active enough to the point that you need to do a minimum of 30 to 45 minutes aerobic exercise up to five times in a week at least mm. so that that could make you you you, you could be said to be active okay, so um, aerobic you mean taking a walk a brisk walk, a brisk walk very yeah. brisk walk yes. mm -hmm. or any other ex form of exercise that will make you sweat okay so these are things that if you do you're able to do that within 30 to 45 minutes daily mm -hmm. up to five times in a, week, in a week you will actually get yourself on a healthy living life uh, okay. pathway so with this you are taking care of sedentary lifestyle mm -hmm. you're taking care of your high, high blood pressure the risk of high blood pressure you're taking care of the risk of diabetes and your general well-being the lipidemias that will that will predispose you to uh, what we call arterial sclerosis mm -hmm. thickening of thickening the blood vessels, blood vessels will be far away from you so you, you now see that these are things that we could do to prevent development of stroke that is the first level then the other level when you now have when you have had maybe diabetes and hypertension that's the next level of mm -hmm. prevention yes if we are not able to prevent this and it has developed you know that you have a higher risk because you have a higher risk we encourage you make sure that you have your drugs you have your medication mm -hmm. visit your doctor do your routine care and make sure that your blood pressure is under control that your your diabetic and glucose level is under control and if there are also other risk factors like um, for those that are sickle cell disease patient or do visit your doctor yeah, regularly really so right. that you don't have a, a recurrent cycling um, acu um ischemic attacks and all that, that vaso occlusive crisis mm -hmm. that will continue to cause a lot of um formation of thrombus formation of clots mm -hmm. that will also predispose to this so if you already have this medical condition you take care of them and make sure that they are controlled then the next level is that assuming you have also had you have passed through this and was not able to get that and you get what well, the 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 third company that we call transient ischemic attack mm -hmm. uh, there's this there is this also these um, studies that have also said that people with transient ischemic attack have a higher risk of having a full-blown stroke so mm -hmm. it's like a warning shot yes okay. you are almost waiting it's for okay. that so when you have 
pass through, you didn't control your blood pressure and all that, and you have had a transit ischemic attack, we advise you to make sure that you come, you get back to prevent that because if not, there is this truck that is corner. still by the corner. And uh, the, uh, beyond the transit ischemic stroke, and you also have um, the first, you, you have had a first stroke. Mm -hmm. We also encourage you after the first management and treatment, the risk could be either with 50-50 mm -hmm. after the first stroke. But if you have, after having a first stroke, you are at a risk of having a second stroke. And the second stroke are not usually very, very, very good. We've recorded as much as 80 to 90% mortality from a repeat stroke. Wow. So it's advised not to expose yourself to a second or even a third stroke because the, the more number of strokes you have, the higher risk of having a mortality wow. and all that. And however, we still call it prevention, Sha. When you have also had a stroke, the rehabilitation component mm -hmm. is also prevention, so that to make sure that you don't have um, a second one, yes, have a second one, have uh, and disability in maybe not moving, you can't perform your functions and all that. So the rehabilitation components of doing your physiotherapy that will also mm -hmm. make you and give to you fine. Well, which because this end part now just means that. The patient themselves have a lot to do yes. with their own lifestyle to, you know, prevent them from getting to this level. I'm out of time. <laughs> mm. Thank you very much Thank for you. coming. Thank All you right. for educating. Thank I you. think I've learned a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I would need to watch my life and get people around me to also watch, you know, the lifestyle they're living yes. and to Thank avoid you. this in the future. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you thank viewers you. for joining us on the program today. For the past few minutes, I've been speaking to Dr. Chibike Chimdi. He is the Senior Registrar of Family Medicine Department at the Metama District Hospital. And I believe you have learned a lot today. But number one, very important, headaches. Please, when you have that consistently, please see a doctor to make sure that you are fine. Thank you very much for joining us. Goodbye.